Today we got a question from a black belt who's getting into a situation where he's been doing the jiu-jitsu stuff, the jiu-jitsu business stuff full time for about five years. And he's gotten to the point where he's become burned out. He said he just doesn't enjoy, enjoy teaching anymore. He's not excited to do it. And he came into it with this thing about being excited and being passionate and having this thing that he did when he was a young, young guy and learned it. And now he gets to share it with everybody else and he's excited about that. Well, that went away and now he's just burned out and he's going through the motions of teaching. And he knows that I've been doing this stuff for a while. At the time of recording this, we're at 12 years, you know, full time. He's wondering, Chewy, what do you do to make this whole thing not turn into a job? What do you do to avoid burnout? So that's the question. So brother, thank you for the question. I'll call you Bob. I don't want to put your name out there, you know, as you're a black belt with a school. So check it out. You've got to understand where I'm coming from to understand why I don't get burned out. So when I first got into this stuff, Bob, this is back in 2010. Well, my job right before doing this stuff was like working in a cubicle office area and doing tech related work. And I didn't really care for it. I didn't really, I mean, I didn't not get along. There was a couple guys that I really liked at the place, but like most of the people, I just didn't really have anything in common with them, you know, because I was out like beating the crap out of myself and training. And then, you know, aside from like, there was like a handful of people, most people were like just playing video games and stuff, which is nothing wrong with that. It's just not a common bond. And so I didn't really have a ton of people that there that to talk with. And I just, I didn't enjoy the work. And I remember being in the office, reading jujitsu books all day long. I'd be flipping through them. And at the time, around the time that I started jujitsu, nobody was doing this stuff full time and making a living doing it. Nobody was doing it. Everybody, if you had someone that was, had a gym and was trying to do it full time, they were just scraping by. The idea, uh, at least here in the Midwest, out in the coasts and stuff like that was a little bit different, but it just wasn't that popular here in the Midwest. So anybody doing it full time, that was just like, nobody saw it. And humans, it's how we work. It's like monkey see, monkey do. Eh, hey, he's doing it, let me try it, right? It's the way that we work. And so nobody else was doing it. So I didn't even think it was a possibility. And I remember around this time, I'm a brown belt. I would drive around dreaming. Like whenever I was in my car driving, maybe to work or to training or whatever, I would just dream, visualize. Oh man, that would be so cool. And I remember I made the big shift in um, 2009. So 2009, I went down and trained for a week with uh, my coach, Sean Hammonds down in Nashville and trained with his guys. And I remember just having such a good experience. And I was like, this is what I want to do. And I started at that time, some people were starting to do it full time. So I was like, there's a possibility that maybe we could do this. And you may know the story, but basically one day, 2010, March, I'm driving. We had a big seminar here at the, at the gym and a big uh, party afterwards down at one of the bars here in Louisville. It was just such an awesome day. And then it's Saturday evening. Well, I guess it's actually Sunday morning at this point. It's like really early in the morning, like two or three. And I have to get up for work on Sunday because I got called in. <sighs> I remember I was so bummed out and this voice like hit me. I was like, dude, you, you gotta go, you, you can do this full time. Start teaching and training full time, it'll work out. I don't know why, what came to my head, but that's what came to me. So I was like, okay. I pulled over into a uh, parking lot and I just started punching in numbers. It was like two, three in the morning. And I got the amount of money that I needed to get, the bare, the bare amount. I had no idea where any other money was gonna come from, but my, my baseline bills, the bills that essentially like, my everyday month bills. Now this is not food. This is nothing else. This is literally just like my reoccurring bills. It was a thousand dollars. I called up my buddy who was the, um, the main owner of the gym at the time. And I said, bro, can I get a thousand dollars a month? He said, yeah, I can do it. Okay, cool. Like let's do this stuff full time and we'll start in June and June. So for March, June, I was getting ready and then June full time. <laughs> and then it was weird. So many things worked out to where I was able to make the money uh, that I needed for food and for everything else. But essentially a thousand dollars was what I was making. Now I share that with you because that's where it got started. And there was even a point where the gym almost failed in 2010. I remember money got really tight for some different reasons and the gym almost went under um, at a certain point in 2010. And so with that said, now things have gotten a lot better. You know, I've got money in my pocket, we have students here and, and I live a pretty damn good life. I live a life that I would have never dreamed of, to be honest with you. You know, even and even now, we just bought a little farm down, uh, down. it's not too far from the gym, but we had a farm. I did, I did a jiu-jitsu camp there last year, and, um, you know, we're getting the, the barn and stuff worked on right now, actually, today. But, again, I live a beautiful life. It's a great life, and I train jiu-jitsu and do all this stuff. So, with that said, I'm giving you contrast. I went from <laughs> the idea of this could not happen to it's happened, and it's better than I expected. Now, how did that happen? Well, doing all this stuff. I don't take that for granted. So if I even have a moment where I'm like, oh, you know, because I mean, again, we all get down sometimes. We all have down days, right? But if I'm kind of getting in a slump, 
I remember what it was like to be back there. And this is something that you could maybe do for yourself. This is something that I do. I always have something I'm chasing and I try to get a visual image of like what it is that I want, right? So like whatever I'm chasing, because you know, we're all after our goals and trying to hit goals and everything else. So I always have the goal that I'm chasing in my head, but then I always have the other side of it. What am I going away from? What am I trying to get away from? Like, what's that? For instance, when I was a young kid, I remember I was trying to not be overweight and I wanted to be in shape. And in my, my mind, I was visualizing winning the medals and winning the gold medals and stuff. And in the other side, I was getting away from being bullied and getting picked on and not having a girlfriend and not look, liking the way that I looked in the mirror, all these things. And so I worked my tail off to become the guy that eventually did win the gold medals. And so when I became the guy that was doing the gym stuff full time, by the way, I had no clue what I was doing business-wise at the time, but I knew that I wanted to do this stuff. And I had the visual, I, I visualized what I wanted. I wanted the gym, I wanted certain things to happen. You know, I wanted to be able to do these things. Now, I don't know how I'm gonna do them, I'm gonna figure them out, which I did. But on the other side, it was like, what am I going away from? What am I running from? I'm running away from that corporate environment. I hated the corporate environment. If you, if you get, some of you guys would probably work in corporations, you probably like it. But I'm talking about that like cubicle, office area, I didn't like it at all. It was not for me at all. Um, if, if I, for some reason, if everything fell apart, I would probably go back and get a trade or something just so I wouldn't have to be around in like a stuffy office environment or something, but that, right? So then you get there. So then I'm, I'm getting away from that. I'm getting away from not being able to do this thing. And I go back to remembering what was it like to drive around in your car and wish you could be doing what you're doing right now. Why would you be upset about that? Why would, you let the, why would you let yourself be burned out about that? And then I get to think about myself as a coach. People are coming in with hopes, dreams, goals, and aspirations of their own. Those sit on my shoulder. I don't get to be like, you know, I'm kind of burned out today. I don't want to do that. that, that that's not an option. These people are coming in here. I got to be here for them. It's what I got to do. And I derive a lot of purpose from that. You know, I derive a lot of purpose from being here for other people and trying to do my best. Now, it doesn't mean I don't have down days because they'll tell you sometimes I'm down or sometimes I'm wore out or whatever, but I try to give it 100% every time I get in here. And I just try to remember where I'm coming from. So again, for you, you probably came into teaching with that mindset of probably a similar way that I did. Think about what that's like. Try to connect back to that. Because it's always sad to see someone, I have a friend, um, it was sad to see him go through this thing too where he went into this gym business stuff, excited, ready to teach everybody, and you know was ready to do this thing, and then he got burned out too. And I suspect that a lot of people get burned out, by the way, because they don't know how to run a business successfully or how to run a business effectively. You know, they, they learn all the jujitsu stuff and they think they're just going to open it up and they never actually learn how to do any of the business stuff. <laughs> and then, you know, I know that sometimes martial arts and money can be touchy, touchy for people. But I can tell you that when the gym almost failed in 2010 for a couple months, it was a lot more difficult to teach and focus on my students because I'm like, are the lights going to be on next week? Are we even going to be here next month? Who knows? It's, a, it's not a fun place to be. Whereas when money's abundant and we can do cool stuff, like it's fun. Like for instance, this weekend, at the time of recording this, we're bringing out Sean Williams to teach a seminar, body lock passing seminar. We're gonna have food catered to the gym and it's on us. Like I'm not charging the students anything extra for it. It's just a gift to them. Thank you for being members. It's a cool thing to be able to do that. We get to sponsor people for competitions. We get to be able to, it's really cool to be able to do cool stuff and serve the members in a, in a bigger way. Can't do that when money's tight. And also I can focus on the people more because I'm not worried about, hey, are we gonna be here next month? Tangent. But going back to my friend, I remember going to his gym and training with him for a little bit. And I remember there was one day this new guy comes into his gym and this guy is excited, he's all lit up. He's like loving jiu-jitsu. He's been watching videos, he knows people's names in jiu-jitsu. Like this is, this is a number of years ago back when people didn't walk into the gym and really know much about jiu-jitsu. Now like it's like Jocko, you know, Joe Rogan, and then they listen to some other people. This is before all of that. But he still knew people, he'd been researching it. And he just got a divorce, he's got his daughter with him, he's ready to sign her up because she's getting bullied and he's ready to like just kind of figure out a new place for himself because he wants to get back in touch with himself and sort of connect with himself. I mean, like that's perfect. You've got a kid that needs to be, uh, to learn self-defense and become stronger and you've got a guy who's looking for a new beginning and something to explore a new place. I mean, you, that, who already knows what jiu-jitsu is? You couldn't have asked for a person better to sign up. So I'm talking to my buddy, I'm like, bro, you're gonna sign these people up, right? I mean, they're ready to go. And he's like, nah, I don't know, man. And like, I was like, what are you talking about? Now, my friend that was with me, he ended up signing him up and like did the whole thing. And it was sad to see that because you're like realizing like that dude's excited. He's coming in with these goals for him and himself, his kid. And then the coach is burned out. So they're not able to deliver that. It's unfortunate. So again, remember your place. Remember that sort of place in your mind because again, that's what's going on. And then another thing that I wrote down, I want to make sure I remember it here. 
for you. Two things, actually. One is that when you make your classes, are you doing something that you would enjoy doing? Right? Is this, is, this, is this an experience that you would enjoy? Like one of the things, and this is kind of true with everything that I do, anytime I do anything, I want to try to make it to where I would enjoy the experience. If I was going through what they're going through, would I enjoy this? Would I have fun? Would this class been enjoyable to me? Would we have had fun? I mean, if, if, I, if the answer is no, I don't want to do it. I'm not going to do it. Even with these videos, sometimes I'm like speaking to people like me. Like I feel like right now I'm talking to you. I'm talking to some younger version of me who maybe was having a bad day. And I'm trying to be as helpful as I can to connect with. And that's the way I come from. So from, in, from that vantage point, you can think about you as a white, blue, purple, but whatever. Would this been something you would have enjoyed? Do you enjoy doing it now? If not, you need to shake things up and you can change things. Again, you as a coach, you as a gym owner, a lot of the stuff with jiu-jitsu, we can play around with it. We can change the class structure. We can, do, we can change the way we do things. There's no book for what we have to do. There's no necessarily strict code that we have to follow, depending on your association. And then the last thing, and this is just me again, trying to give you an idea, do a workout, lift weights, go for a run, do something to get some blood flow before you teach class. If you feel like you're just kind of going into class with low energy, get your body moving a little bit. Because if you get moving, it's very hard to be, to be burned out. It's hard to be depressed. It's hard to be in a slump if you're working out and you're pushing yourself. So those would be some ideas for you. Uh, videos long enough. Hopefully that's useful to you, uh, Bob. And uh, good luck with your situation, brother.